Okay, welcome to another episode of Throttle Stop Garage, where in this episode, we're going to finish the carbon fiber intake manifold. All right, a quick recap of where we were. I 3D printed a plug from uh, which I developed a set of molds. Uh, and then I began the process of making this carbon fiber manifold. So it's been a long time and I'm sorry for taking so long to get around to it, but that's just the way life goes. There are the molds. So I made a mold for the front part and I made a mold for the back plenum piece. Uh, and then once all the carbon fiber was loaded in and this was treacherous and terribly stressing, but uh, everything actually turned out really good. So I was happy with how this all worked out. Here's the carbon fiber going into that a uh, big mold that is the base uh, basis of the plenum. And once we were all done with that and we popped it out, this is last summer. So it's been months since I've been able to get this particular job actually cleaned and tidied up. So once it's all loaded, I infused the mold and we managed to get ourselves a decent looking part. So if you haven't watched those episodes, please go back and uh, start and rewatch those episodes. Just the easiest release ever. Jeez, that looks good. Let's get it out of there. Woohoo! Just to show you I'm not faking it. That is absolutely perfect. Oh my word. Then the two parts were cut apart and the uh, the front section was adhered to that longer top section and it was all placed inside an aluminum uh, base plenum that I had machined up. So I first had to design all of these bits and pieces and then get them all to work. Uh, but here's that plenum, right? And this is how it all goes together. So it all clips in nicely. And that was just me gluing it down, right? So it's all stuck in there. And that brings us to where we are today. Okay, so with the uh, with the bits and pieces all put together, it's now time to assemble that intake manifold. So we're going to take the carbon plenum and we're going to adhere it uh, down to all of the aluminum parts. Got them back from the welder, uh, sent them out for ceramic coating. So those have been sir coated. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, glacier or something or other, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, I, I picked it because it looked kind of clean and that's what we're going for with the build. Uh, so now we're going to get all the parts prepped and we're going to get these parts stuck together. Alright, one of the first things I did as I was getting this done was I went in and I cleared off the entire part. Now there's just some small little pinholes and imperfections where the pieces joined. And there was one little flaw right down the central spine there. You can see me getting a little bit of clear on that. Now I'm going to sand all of this clear off, or at least almost all of it. And, uh, and I'll use it as just a base, right? So when I, I did the final coat of clear, which I didn't actually tape for unknown reasons, uh, it'll look really nice. So again, we're just uh, putting it on there. I did mask up, of course, with the final coat after all of this had been sanded off. I did mask up the glue line, uh, just for all of those who'll wonder. Anyway, that's uh, that's what we're doing here. Hard, Mark. My hand doesn't bend that way. That's mostly going to have to get sanded on. Okay, so I waited for a couple of weeks just to let that clear fully settle down and cure. And then I got my three inch pad on my little dual action sander. And I'm just concentrating on the areas where I had these small flaws and imperfections. And I'm just buffing that clear off of those areas until it's completely smooth, right? So we're just gonna work our way all the way around and then into the bucket it goes and I'm wet sanding. So after I finished uh, doing the sanding with the DA, which was at 180 grit, then I'm going down through the grits right, starting at 400 and then working my way down to 800 grit uh, until I get the entire part sanded. And I've cleared off, again, all those glue areas so that they're, uh, they're going to take the adhesive properly. Okay, so the adhesive that we're using to adhere the carbon fiber plenum to all of the aluminum parts 
is Loctite EA9460. This is actually an aircraft epoxy. It's um, even Loctite won't tell me all the details on the inside. Uh, and it was sent to me by a viewer. So once again, thank you very much. Uh, the viewer works in the racing industry and this is the epoxy that they use in IndyCar and F1 and all kinds of things to put things together. So uh, he sent me very kindly, sent me along a few tubes. So once again, thank you very much for that. And um, we're going to get everything stuck together using it. Now, it comes as a gray. So over here, in this uh, small pot, we've got some black polyester. I mean, if I, if I get this up, I'll spill it. And the light is terrible, but it's a black polyester pigment that simply turns this gray material into something that's black just to match all of this over here. I've carefully prepared all the surfaces. I've roughed them up. I've cleaned them with acetone. Uh, and then I've got a, a fresh sheet on my mixing board in order to mix this up. Again, with most of these sorts of adhesives, the initial uh, squirt, you just want to throw that out, okay? Uh, and then once it's flowing freely, uh, everything is going to be okay. Now for the gun, uh, it's a 3M style adhesive a gun. You assemble the parts like that. And then there's a mixing tip that goes on the end. Okay, so the mixing tip just provides a passageway for the material to mix. And once it comes out the end of the nozzle, it's thoroughly mixed. So, all right, I've got to get this done. I am terrified. I have spent a lot of hours working on this. Like a lot. I think I'm putting that in backwards. Is there a backwards? Probably. Okay, so now we should be ready to go. And I'm hoping I can get the video of that as it starts. It's Okay, so now it's been thoroughly mixed in the mix nozzle. We're just going to send the first little bit out uh, onto a piece of paper towel. And then I'm going to guess how much I need in order to get just the first part done. My theory is it's going to be at least a little bit more than that. The fun part is I just looked up the material, the TDS, the technical data sheet online. It's a 72 hour epoxy. <laughs> If you're used to using five minute stuff, this is the other side of the world to that. Now when you're mixing it up, you'll notice that I just put that polyester uh, uh, pigment on the top side of my mixing board and I just added only enough of it in order to turn the color. You do not want to sluke in a whole ton of it there. I underestimated the amount I needed, so I just added a little bit more. It's no no problem. It's a 72-hour epoxy. And I'm checking all the way around to make sure that I have a really good bead inside, outside, and coating, fully coating the part. All right, it's a good, that's a good look at why you do that validation step onto the car. Um, even as carefully as I marked it off, we're not in the right position. It's just a little bit. So every time you want to move it just a hair, it goes a lot more than a hair. Carefully take it off. All right. 
Okay, so now we've got the epoxy both inside and out. In fact, the tape worked really well as you're applying the epoxy to get a nice consistent bead all the way around the outer edge. Uh, we've got um, everything filled up. Like I've gone inside with the little cutoff spreaders and sort of slooped it around as best I can and tried as hard as I could to not make a mess. But really, this is sort of what you got. So doing the best you can. There's a few little bits of the epoxy that hit the manifold, but I'll, uh, I'll clean that off when we get around to it. I suppose I should turn it around. I always got to remember which side is uh, the back side so we don't glue it in backwards. It would be a not so great end. And my tape line is my reference uh, for where everything should be, right? So the tape line has shown me that, in essence, we're down. Let me get a flashlight. Uh, verify the inside, which looks perfect. And wait for three days for it to dry. I did play around with it quite a bit more just to make sure I even ended up putting a few clamps on it uh, just very, very gently because the, the clear is still a little bit raw at this stage. Uh, and then I just tidied it up, just remove any of the squeeze out on the outside. You really don't want to have to sand this kind of material when it's done. So uh, it, as it gets fairly hard, I mean, it's a pretty stiff epoxy. Uh, so I just used a little bit of lacquer thinner on a paper towel, went around the entire surface and ensured that it was perfectly clean. Just trying to give you a look inside that plenum so you can see that the glue line is good all the way around. test fit. fuel line is going to come in right here and return here cap there clamp right there for the whole mess that's going to be just fine yeah it looks pretty good Okay, so now that we've had our first test fit into the car, you can see that everything fit really well. Super happy again with how it's all turned out, even though it's been sitting in my basement for the past couple of months. Uh, we're still moving, just almost imperceptibly right now. Don't worry about it. 
Uh, that's just kind of the way channels go when they're actually covering a real build. Uh, right, so I'm, I'm busy trying to make sure I'm staying employed at the moment, so I'm working an awful lot at my real job, and I'm not in here at the garage uh, as often as I'd like right now. Um, but everything is, you know, it's turning around, so I think it'll be all right. Anyway, intake manifold's done. We're going to move on to the exhaust, because uh, once you've managed to jam a bunch of... Uh, highly dense air into your car, uh, you got to get rid of it. Uh, so that's going to be coming up in the next couple of episodes as we cover exactly how I think we should go about making turbo manifolds for our project cars. Okay, that's it. Uh, thanks again and uh, keep your stick on the ice. I don't know if there's anything else I need to tell you. Is there anything else I need to tell you? I cleaned my bench. <laughs>